that somebody's head? My gosh, that's a, that's a man's head. Hey everybody, I thought I would play a little bit of Minecraft just to pass the time. I'm standing on the back porch of my, of my house. And you can see the lake behind me. Let me close my door. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a, a new building that I've, I've been working on. You can kind of see it off in the distance. It's a large building. Yeah, look at that. It's huge. Wow. It's kind of a uh a daunting uh, just just the idea of me of me building this is <laughs> I don't really want to do it <laughs> but I have to so that I can enjoy it but Building it can be quite uh, relaxing. It's just going to take a while. I have not played Minecraft in a while. Now this building is going to be a a uh, a diving academy. This is going to be a really deep pool of water and once it's finished there'll be a lot of exploring that we can do down there in the pool but way up there at the top there's also going to be a diving board so this academy is for two types of diving deep sea diving and then uh, 
just regular diving off of a diving board. And before I can really work on the inside, I need to, you know, I need to get the outside finished. There's all sorts of uh, glass I need to put in. I've put a lot in, but I still have a lot more to go. Now this wall looks complete. And uh, yeah, I've got glass right there. Actually, what glass am I actually using? I'm going to have to break one out so I can compare. Yeah. So I need some uh, blue glass. And I don't see any in my inventory, so let's search it out. Light blue. I believe that's what I need. So let's just put it right here. Oops. There we go. Now let's find out where where I left off. Seems like a good place to start. Maybe I should do this from the outside. Oh, by the way, look at that harbor. Is that something or what? It's getting, it's getting cooler outside. The leaves are turning. It's good football weather. Wisconsin got beat. seeing what I've done, what I haven't done. Recently, I jumped in my car and
Went to a model, a model train show. Now, how many of you watching this have ever been to a model train show? I just needed to get out of the house. So that's what I did. And I enjoyed myself. Uh, I called up a friend to see if he uh, to see if he could go with me, but he he already had obligations. So I went by myself. It turned out pretty good because I ran into a friend at the train show. Now a model train show is uh, it's where you can buy model train stuff in the various uh, local model train clubs usually have a uh, train layout put together and you know they run trains I didn't buy really anything except for three small pads of paper. Now the reason I bought the pads is because they were vintage. They were the type of uh, pads of paper that the railroad would maybe give to customers or give to employees. And small pads of paper, maybe three by four inches, maybe. The railroad is no longer in business. It's a uh, Southern Railroad Company. Southern Railroad has not existed since 1982. And that's when Southern Railroad and Norfolk and Western merged to become the Norfolk or Norfolk Southern. But the pads of paper were inexpensive. I gave uh, the vendor two dollars for all three of them. So I know the pads are at least over 30, 30 years old. You might 
be thinking now why would I want to pay money for those pads of paper well many of you know that I like uh, fountain pens and I do like some particular ballpoint pens also but when you like pens you also tend to like paper and paper from different periods of time well it's it's always an interest to me I especially like very old paper so over on my main channel sometime in the future we shall write on the paper this particular show there were two operating layouts and I took some video footage and I'll post it right now for your viewing pleasure. And while you're watching that, I'll continue to place these glass box. Yeah, so it was a fun day. an admission fee it's like six dollars to get in the door but there was a lot to look at it's been a while since I've been able to go to a train show. I think it's been years. And one thing I noticed was all of the 3D printed items that you could purchase for your model train layout. and had 3D printed cows. So you could have a herd of cows. In a, uh, you know, in a pasture on your layout. And depending on the scale of the layout, there's different scales. Z scale is the smallest. And then there's N scale, a little bit larger. 
in HO scale. I think N scale is like 1 1 60th and HO scale is 1 87th I think. After HO you have S scale and then you have O scale. And above O scale, I believe you have G scale. So I did not see any 3D printed parts for Z scale. As an example, a say a, a soda can for Z scale would be so small. <laughs> I'm not sure you could even see it. At least I couldn't. But there was plenty of things printed for N scale, which was the next scale, the second to land. Uh, not as small as Z scale, but it's, N scale is still pretty small. So the possibilities for model railroaders these days have been greatly expanded by 3D printing. December, maybe sooner. Somebody is actually giving me the printer. They purchased a, uh, a newer model and they would like to give me as a, just as a gift their old one. So I've been, you know, watching the YouTube videos on 3D printing, especially with this particular model of printer. And the first thing that I noticed is that I have a lot to learn. so many things you can print but what I'm interested in printing are some buildings for a diorama a diorama for four matchbox and hot wheel cars Now that scale for those is uh, it's larger than HO scale. I think it's going to be along the lines of uh, along the lines of S scale. And even though there's you know a, a pretty good selection of buildings for S scale that are you know for model model railroads but there's not a good selection of buildings for hot wheel cars 
at least not that I'm aware of. I would like to have a, um, a diorama with, with a, a drive-in uh, a drive-in restaurant, you know, like on like on American Graffiti or Happy Days. And on that diorama, I would also like to have a, uh, a, a small car dealership and maybe a gas station. So I'm thinking that I can use I could use some 3D modeling software and create these buildings on the computer and download the file and feed that file, you know, transfer it onto the, the 3D printer and, and then print the buildings. And after I print them, I will have to uh, I will have to paint them. Now, if I'm correct, that should make some make for some pretty good content over on my main channel. I've been so busy over the last handful of years and many of you know, know why. But now I'm going to have some, some time on my hands. So building models is something I want to get back into, especially building model cars. I'm actually in the middle of a kit that uh, I had to stop on it because I, well, I just, I just didn't have time to continue working on it, so I put it away. couple of years ago I think I'd like to get that back out and continue and finish that one up it's uh, I believe it's a 48 Ford sedan But after that, I have a really nice 70 and a half Camaro that I want to build. I've actually got, you know, I like model cars. I'm not a model car kit collector. I think I've got I think I have maybe about a five, maybe five kits that are ready to, that I haven't, you know, built. I think I'll, I think I'll show those in a, uh, 
in a video on my main channel. That's what I'll do. When I get all, when I get set to start building again, I'll show those kits. One of the kits is a, uh, a custom van. Custom vans were popular back in the 70s. I mean, they were really, really popular. By custom, what I mean is people would take a standard Chevrolet or Dodge or Ford van and put a custom paint job on it. Some really crazy uh, round or teardrop windows in the back. Inside they would put shag carpet, televisions, little refrigerators. CB radios. I don't know if any of you, well, I know some of you do, but I don't know. So there may be quite a few of you that don't know what a CB radio is. It's basically a two way radio. If you're a younger person, you've probably never heard of a CB because you have cell phones. But back before cell phones, CB, CB stands for Citizen Band. Citizen Band Radio was, was a Pretty popular form of communication from vehicle to vehicle. And you could have a CB radio inside your house. It was typically known as a base station because you know your house is your base. It used to be 23 channels, now I think it's 40. I have a CB radio. And I actually listened to it this morning. And I also listened to it uh, the day I went to the train show when I was on the when I was on the highway. Most people that use CB radios today are truck drivers. But even amongst the truck drivers, they're not as popular as they used to be. When I was a kid, I was introduced to CB radios through a friend. And when you use a CB, at least back then, you had a nickname. And uh, on, on a CB, your nickname is what you call a... Uh, a handle. 
So when you're talking on a CB, someone may ask you what your handle is, and what they're asking you is what's your nickname, your CB name. And when I was a kid, the friend that introduced me to CB, his dad, his dad was all into it, so he was into it somewhat. His handle was Groovy Grasshopper. Yeah. Groovy Grasshopper. So when we used his dad's base station, CB, he let me talk on it. And someone asked me what my handle was. So I had to invent something on the fly. And my friend Mike was calling himself Groovy Grasshopper, so I just called myself Crazy Cricket. I don't know how lame. Could not get any lamer. Now I have a CB right now, but I don't have a handle. Maybe that's what we should do. We should try to figure out what my handle is. Do you have any suggestions? Maybe you can Tell me in the comments. Uh, keep it nice. Don't. Nothing too crazy. If I were a truck driver, I would have to have a handle like something like a highway man or something like that. My handle could be something like old man, not highway man, but just old man. <laughs> Train man. Yeah, that's, that'd be cool. Now the range that you can talk on a CB really isn't typically that far because it never really was intended to be for long distance. But there are modifications that you can make. One of those is adding a power amplifier to increase the power. When it comes to transmitting, power is important a lot of times, or most of the time, I should say. I think the power, the standard power on a CB is, I think, 4 watts. Now, 4 watts might get you you know, five or six miles, maybe. But I listen to guys on the CB that are coming in from other states. And that's because they have amplifiers. They're not supposed to. I think it's against the law to amplify and transmit on the CB frequencies with power like that, you know, huge amounts of power. But I listen to guys from hundreds of miles away. Now it's, it's not like shortwave radio. Which, by the way, 
I was listening to shortwave radio right before I started playing Minecraft this evening. Shortwave radio is a it's a whole different ball game. Uh, that's probably I'm not going to really talk much about it in this video, other than saying it's a it's a way that you can listen to radio broadcast from around around the world because the signals bounce off the ionosphere I don't even remember how I got on the topic of CB, CB radio. <laughs> I like radio. Uh, this morning I was a lot of times on the weekend. I haven't had a whole lot of time to do very much, but I have made time to to eat. So if I typically would get something like a like a breakfast burrito or something and take it down to the train tracks and eat my breakfast, watch some trains go by. And of course the railroad people have to communicate with each other and they use two-way radios. I have a what's called a scanner that scans the radio frequencies. So I'm able to listen to all of the communications with the railroads. sitting here yapping running my mouth <laughs> and time is really flying by you may not even be awake right now we're coming up on the getting close to 45 minutes So, if you're still with me in the comments, you can uh, in the comments you can leave a comment that says "Breaker Breaker One Nine. What that means is when you're on the CB radio and you want to start a conversation on a particular channel such as 19. You would get on there and say breaker breaker 1-9. That means, hey, anyone on channel 19 that wants to talk. And sometimes if you know who it is you want to talk to, you can actually say their name. And you can say something like breaker breaker 
rubber ducky. Do you have your ears on? Which means you're trying to get hold of someone named Rubber Ducky. And you're asking if they have their, their radio turned on. I've thought about doing a, a video on my other channel where I just park myself close to a truck stop and talk to the truckers about ASMR to see if any of them say if, yeah to see if any of them know what ASMR is. Now, some of you might be asking right now, what is ASMR? And uh, you should look it up. It's basically a, uh, a relaxing response to something that you deem to be relaxing. But it might be entertaining to hear the truckers answer a few questions about ASMR. I bet you some of them know what it is. I also bet you that most of them probably don't. Now, if you can remember what led to me talking about CBs and that let me know because I because <laughs> I can't remember. Well there's another wall complete. But going back to the model cars, when I was a kid, I used to build uh, models of semi-trucks, you know, big diesel trucks. I would like to do that again. At least build at least one. and maybe enter it in a local model car show because I like to go to those. And I like to watch the model car uh, videos on YouTube. There's some people out there that are they're such fantastic model car builders.
The one particular channel I like to watch is a video a channel called Model, yeah, Model Car Videos. This guy, I think model cars is his primary hobby. And his model car building room is basically a, a storage container that he's got in his yard. He's got it set up pretty nice. It's heated and cooled. Normally I could tell you his name, but I'm drawing a blank at the moment. It's a nice night, a nice night out there in, in Minecraft land. I'm kind of getting tired. I may save the rest of this for another time. Let's just zoom around the city for a little bit. Here's the post office. Is that one great post office or what? When you get close to it, it's, it makes noises. I don't know why. Don't, do you hear that? I, I don't know what that's about. Lots of stuff going on inside the post office. Patronville, which is the name of this uh, city, is a city that uh, it's comprised of people that uh, are patrons of mine over on my Patreon page. They built all this. It's quite amazing what they've built. It's a fantastic city. I mean, look at this. This used to be just empty land. But now it's turned into what it's turned into. It's amazing. And this is just the city part. Outside the city limit, there's, there's so much out there. I, I don't even know of all the stuff that's out there. There's a, a ballpark. And we've got a baseball field and a soccer field. We have a have an, an ice rink. We have shopping malls and hospitals and prisons and Restaurants and dance clubs, casinos, taverns, and bars, and you name it, Patronville has it. You want me to just drop down? into the pool. All right. You asked for it. 
hold on to your hats. Oh. That didn't even hurt. It did that sound just for effect. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a deep pool. I may go even deeper, I don't know. It might be one of those things where I just kind of see if I can just dig a hole to, to China. So let's zoom out of here. Just about to the top. There we are. So ain't that something? I want to go over to uh, something that just amazes me. It's over here somewhere. It's a cruise ship. All of these ships down here are very nice quite amazing quite amazing but there's this one gigantic ship over here it's a you kind of see it coming into view it's like a, a you know a, a carnival cruise ship I mean look at that look at the size of that thing And you can go down inside of it, and all the rooms and everything are there. I'm going to drop right down on this, uh, this basketball court. Is that somebody's head? Gosh, it's a, that's a man's head. <laughs> There's nobody around, but is this another one? People playing basketball with human heads. Oh my gosh. But this ship, you can you can go down into the bowels of this thing. You can just get lost. You know, this is easily a thousand foot ship. What's with all the heads? I don't get it. If you built this ship, or maybe if you're the ones that put all the, the human heads all over the place, maybe you can tell us what that's about. Oh, 
it just about fell. Man. This is crazy. I've been on this ship one, one time before. And, uh, you could spend probably an hour just exploring this one ship. That's why Patronville and everything about it is just, uh, It's immense. There's so much to see. Like all these other ships, they're the same way. You can explore inside of them. You know, there's a there's a ghost ship. What is that? The Black Pearl. That cruise ship is, man, that is something. And there's a, you know, this, this harbor, all it had in it at one time was that, uh, that little submarine down, down here. Do you see it? Yeah, you can go in there. And, you know, that submarine is pretty cool. I'm not sure why it has no supports to this lanterns that are just kind of floating in air. But wow, this really gives you an appreciation of the size. I mean, you can't even see to the end of that ship. But you can look in these windows and you know, everything is in there. There's a sea monster. There's a name for that. I think it's like a, a kraken. Is that right? There's a big squid. It's got his, his tentacles all wrapped around that ship. And there's some ships that are up in the air. Big propellers on them. There's a tree growing at the top of this ship and some cows it's quite amazing this is the harbor village and there's the skull pyramid yeah you can go inside that Explore. This up here is a, a lazy river that goes all around the city in a very lazy manner. One of the companies in Patronville is a company called Labs. The ruins of uh, their first location is right here. You can see the S is on its side. There was a pretty bad accident there. Uh, I have a video all about that. I'm not going to go into it right here, but suffice to say, the they created a monster, and it got loose. And for all we know, it's still loose out there. I've 
got a secret passage in this uh, this village. This is Izzy the Tiger's horse farm. But what a lot of people don't know is over in this well. I have a secret. It's been a long time since I've been down here. But yeah, this is not, this is it. What's through this door? Maybe I used to know, but I have to re-familiarize myself with this. Underground horse racing. There's the underground hockey arena. Here's an underground church. If you're curious to know what that looks like. a minister living back here. I don't see him though. And the underground hockey arena is quite the spectacle. Ticketmaster. Ah, okay, thanks. He said go on in. Boy, look at that, would you? Would you look at that? Look at the size of that Jumbotron. Quite amazing. You're in the rough diamonds now. The rough diamond mine now. Yeah, the Patronville rough the hockey team, I think, is called the the Rough Diamonds. This is where they play. At least their home games. And here is it's a horse racing track. Is that a horse standing on top of the how did he get up there? Somebody leave a door open or something? No, they're all closed. I'm not sure how that horse got up there. Which horse is it? 
Oh, these horses have names. Now this guy doesn't have a name. And the really rich people have, you know, these nice suites that they can view the racing. They can view the racing from there. Yeah, there's Big Brown. Big Brown. The Underground Village is a, uh, it's a shopping mall. You can kind of see the stores. Ye old armor shop. Flower shop. There's a, a record store. You know what these days the younger people call the records, they call them vinyls. Back in the day we just call them records. Yeah, they're made out of vinyl. And I don't really know why they don't just continue to call them records. I don't know why they call them vinyls. There's a place to buy things for your horse. There's a lab store. You can buy crazy things in there. There's a bookstore. Uh, there's the Lava Lounge Bar and Club. Yeah, that's not for children. Patronville Athletics. CEO Masani. There's Patronville, uh, you know, there's a dentist. And there's a walk-in clinic. Uh, there's Pretty in Pink. Yep, I know what you're thinking. 21 and only. Respect our dancers. Uh, there's a door that goes to the, the offices of the ball. And there's a horse laying on its back. Oh my gosh. There's some little, little places, little kiosk type things, toolsmith, and a butcher, shepherd, fletcher, farmer, there's a McDonald's, there's a, uh, a bowling alley, I think there's a movie theater down this way somewhere too. Yeah, you can go bowling. There's a theater down here somewhere. Not sure how to get to it. There's a sushi bar. Uh, there's the drunken sheep. There's two locations of the Drunk and cheap. That's just a bar. 
I think you can get food. You can get food there also. There's an Arbucks coffee shop. In the Casada Steakhouse. And there's more uh, places for more businesses. Patronville's Underground Cannabis. Cannabis. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Wonder what they sell in there. Yep. There's Granny's cookie jar. If you ring the bell, she might wake up. Oh, that, that, that got her up. The bakery underground. There's Billy. The military museum is up the stairs. Ah, the movie theater is this way. There's a sports bar and a restaurant that way also. What's down there? Well, that's where we just came from. Sports bar and viewing gallery. Please come in, we are open. So I guess you can see the track from here. Yeah. Here's an unfinished business. Here's the, the Underground Village Cinema. Buy your tickets. And then take in the movies. Karate Kid 3, Man vs. Giant. There's the screen. Yeah, you kind of get the picture. And there's, uh, I think there's four, four screens here, I think. Maybe more, I'm not sure. Night of the Flaming Skull. Oh. But anyway, I'm kind of getting tired. Need to get back to my, back to my house. Where's those steps that go up? Entering the German encampment. Welcome to the World War II battlefield. I want to be careful. We don't want to be seen. There's some heavy firepower down there. Tanks and whatnot. Airplanes. We're going to scoot back over here, back into city limits. And we're going to cut across the lake. Over to my house.
totally, totally whipped right now. So I'm just going to land right here on the roof of my house. So anyway, when I decided to play Minecraft tonight, I was going to play my my survival world with Henry McDougall Handel. But when I went to play, I could not find the right, what they call a, a skin. I have different skins, basically different costumes for for this character are. But I could not find my McDougal handle skin. I'll get that sorted out sometime so that we can get back into the to Henry's survival world. Now, if you're still with me, you know, a while ago I asked you to let me know you were still with me by, what did I say to put in the comments? Something like Breaker Breaker 1-9, I think. But if you're still with me now, like an hour and 20 minutes into this video, you can let me know in the comments by typing, I don't know, how about type your, yeah, type your favorite flavor of ice cream. Yeah, just tell me what your favorite flavor of ice cream is. And then we all know that you were, you were still here this long into the video. So until next time, take care.